There are some excellent resources uh, in the, got more people coming. I might need to take the waiting room thing off. It's a little irritating for me. Uh, okay, so there's some great resources that I put under the asynchronous class files. And those will have a lot of Dr. Williams describing specific grammatical things, and he'll give you a lovely philosophical twist on it. There's also a great video that I put on the ace, on the synchronous class today that's only a few minutes long, but shows you all of the different sort of hand strokes and the way to write these syllables. So right now, I just want you to kind of drink it in. Now, uh, has anybody, and you can reply in the chat, has anyone learned Devanagari before? Is there anybody out there? When I first came to Sanskrit, I'd already yeah. learned Devanagari, but I'm a weirdo. Yeah. I know a good amount of Devanagari, yeah. Okay. All right. So we got at least one person. You're ahead. That means whoever's voice that was, whose voice was that? Whose Josh. voice? Josh. Josh. That means yeah. Josh. I mean, you can come to me for help, but you also want to go to Josh. Yeah. And Josh, by helping students grasp this, this symbol set, you already have a decent grasp on you're going to grasp it more. You I've read some David Nagri. You also read some David Nagri? I, 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 I enjoy writing it. Very good. So if we were in class, you probably have better handwriting than mine, and I would instruct you to write stuff on the board. Um, as long as we're going through this Sanskrit course all together, I want you to really focus on your own learning, but sharing with others and learning in a community. Because as so much education research shows, one of the best ways to learn something is to teach it. And I'm going to bring in a colleague of mine who I learned Sanskrit one with. And I remember sitting with her and another friend of ours who unfortunately passed. And we would sit at this donut shop, this all night donut shop in Santa Barbara and muddle through the Sanskrit. And I'm a dunderhead. So they always got it quicker than I would. Uh, on the other hand, I ended up being a better Sanskritist than them because I kind of stuck with it and I had to learn systems differently because my my neuroatypicality. But I'm going to have my dear friend Chloe come in and talk about the glories of learning Sanskrit and tell her experiences. She no longer works with Sanskrit, but she does wonderful stuff with the Hindi language. Okay, so the first thing we're doing is vowels. And once again, I'm reminding you, go and watch Dr. Williams explain phonemic emanation. Because what you'll find as we look through the vowels, and I'll reproduce his arguments a bit here, is that in Kashmiri Shaivism, in the writing of Abhinava Gupta, he explains how the very emanation of the universe is connected to these syllables. Now, in Hinduism, the gods speak Sanskrit, and the gods speak the universe into existence. So how did they speak that? Well, Sanskrit mystics and philosophers have established that the way the world unfolded was the same as the way these sounds and grammar unfolded in the Sanskrit language. And I'll explain a bit of that process to you. So our first letter we're going to learn, and this is where I, I wrote you a message. Everybody have a pen and a paper? If you do not, get pen and paper in front of you. You have five, four, three. Somebody's got their hand up. Alice. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that when you are turned away from uh, your recording station, it is more difficult to hear you. Yeah, let's, I'm, I'm keeping it, I'm using a directional mic. Let's see if, we'll try it that way. So also let me know, I'm still learning how to use this direct, directional mic. Okay, the way so that the universe was created is very much the same and similar the way that the sounds and grammar unfolded. Yes, and I'm going to explain that as we do the vowels right now. All right, you've got your pen. you got your piece of paper. The first vowel, probably the most important vowel to learn, is uh, the short uh. The uh sound is like put, uh, uh. So when we were looking at swaga tamastu, uh, uh. Uh, the uh sound. So how do you write uh? That's uh. So now I want you to write that uh. You'll notice what I do is I make like a three, and then I put a line, and then I draw another line down, and then I put this line on the top. You'll see with Sanskrit, you will see with Sanskrit that words 
you can tell they're joined together but and letters are joined together by that line at the top. So this is the first one, uh. Abhinavagupta uses this word. Ah. Anuttara, to describe the syllable uh. So as God, existence, everything, suddenly begins turning. It's as if there is nothing in the universe, and suddenly there's this strange amount of turning. It's almost as if it's a self-awareness is coming to all that yet does not exist. God becomes self-aware. Anuttara means nothing higher, nothing higher whatsoever. So Anuttara, uh. And I'm, I'm cribbing off Dr. Williams' take on this, but the funny thing is, as I was watching the video, I had this like flashback. I remember my pundit, Stanishwar Tamalsana, did the exact same thing and explained these same philosophical concepts but not from a bit of a Gupta, but from the um, the uh, the Shri Chakra tradition that he's a part of in uh, Nepal. They're goddess worshippers. But either way, uh, Anuttara, the beginning of all things, the initial stirrings. Now, we want to get to ah, a longer A. Just like that, three again. Then one, two. I didn't draw that right. So you see, it's just like the uh with another line. Still getting used to the markers. So that is a look. So this is a short uh. This is a long uh. The line I'm putting above that is called a diacritical mark. This is how we represent using Roman letters, Sanskrit words. And I'll explain the diacritical marks as we learn each letter. So we have uh. This uh stands for something else. And it might be a word you know. Ananda. Who knows what Ananda means? Yell it out. Bliss. 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 Yes. So the deity who is formless and complete begins to feel the stirrings of self-awareness. That's Anuttara. Then Ananda. Bliss. Why does God create the universe? Out of his own very bliss. Bliss is the engine of all emanation. Try to think about what life would be like if we saw that everything was unfolding because of the inherent bliss in the deity who is the universe. Hence, the first quality of the universe is bliss. All right, we've got long A and short A. Next, this is, kind of, this is a fun one to write. We have E. That's a short I that stands for Icha. So short I. So it's like a one, two, three, squiggle in a little circle. So I go, see how I do that? And I kind of, you got you want it to be a little bit elongated. So that's the E. E stands for Icha. Notice long A. I put the diacritical mark above it. Icha. What does Icha mean? Does anybody know the word Icha? Will. Will. Excellent. It's will. But in this case, we have uh, this will is the desire to create. Out of bliss, this thing, this Shiva, begins to have a will. A will to create. A will to do something. Out of his bliss comes will. Now, we had a short A and a long A. Now we have a short I. What do you think is going to come next? Long I. Long mm. I. So long I is just like short I, except you put this little hook on top. That's it. Little hook. So whereas a uh and a uh just have a second line right there, E has the hook here. Also, we'll discover later. Just have this in your head. If you have an uh and you're in a sentence and you have another uh after it, it will become long uh. Don't worry about it. We're gonna we'll get there together on that. But I'm trying to give you some previews and how some of this Sunday will work. Sunday is euphonic combination. So syllables and letters change depending on their relationship with other words in the sentence. So long E 
So we call it I in English. We call it E and E in Sanskrit. So we have a, a, e, e. So this long E stands for, uh, what was it? Ah, what was my word again? Oh, it's Ishana again. E. Hold on. What, what am I writing in? Ishana. Okay. Ishana means lordship. We'll see this with Sanskrit often. You'll have a word like, say, Isha. Isha means like lordliness or Icha. And then Ishana means like the thing that has that. So it goes from Isha or Icha to Ishana, meaning sovereignty. So the god begins to turn up. The god begins to feel bliss. Ananda. And God, by God, I mean God, God is the whole shame thing. Then, Icha, it has will. And out of that will becomes sovereignty, acting in a lordly manner, deploying the will. So in this sense, our universe is still contracted. It's still only that one non that one non-differentiated thing. But that's going to change. Because now we come to, ooh. Ooh. So that's a short ooh. Now for that, uh, Abhinava Gupta calls this unmesha. Un me sha. And there's also there's also a word nimesha, and I'll explain why that's important. You'll see that I put a little dot under the S. That makes a sha sound. So unmesha, the Lord has sovereignty. He's beginning to direct his will outward to create. Unmesha is said to be the divine power of knowing. You may have heard the term jnana shakti. Shakti means power. Jnana is an, is an Indo-European term for jna that is a cognate to our word gnosis. So jnana here, we're thinking the power of knowledge, the power of knowing. I also love the word nimesha because it means the twinkling of the eyes. Unmesha means like the partial opening of the eye. Nimesha is the fluttering of the eyes closed. And in fact, a lot of the events in the Mahabharata happen in a spectacular place that is called the Nimesha forest, the forest of fluttering eyes. So we have ooh, ooh. So big line, hook it down. There you go. That's ooh. What do you think the next one's going to be? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it'll be a long one. This one's fun to write. Boom. Boom. And then you just throw a little hook on there. Ooh. Tail. Tail. Pardon? I call it a tail. I call it a That's fair. That's fair. I like it. We're also getting very close to... Notice? I'll explain ohm to you in a minute. When we get down to the vowels. Okay. So we have ooh. That's a long ooh. That long ooh stands for urmi. Urmi is a great word. It means like the waves. So imagine you've got God. God has initial stirrings. He feels bliss. Then he desires to create. And he extends out his creative power into the world. And then he gets a power of knowing. He can conceive the world and maybe makes a plan. And that also means expansion. Unmesha is the moment where he begins to expand. And Urmi, the wave, that is like the waves of creation. We often hear like the word Urmi used to describe waves of consciousness. All right, so that means we have Kaum. Six vowels. Um. Here is the here is our quick first off pop quiz. First person to yell it out wins no prize whatsoever. <laughs> what is that, Doctor Ulrey? I didn't see the word when you wrote out Ermi. I didn't see the whole word on the video screen when you wrote up when oh, you sorry. spelled out Ermi. And all of this material is in uh, Dr. Williams' video. All right, so what does this stand for? Well, you kind of know. 
So this is long O. What's this one? E. 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 Great. And what's this one? Ah. Uh. Ah. All right. You got three. The Lord is moving forward. You are going to know all of these on your own in your sleep. But here is a trick. When one writes uh, in Sanskrit, these vowels that I'm showing you are only written that way when they're not attached to a consonant. Here's the first consonant that we're going to learn in a minute. It's k. See that? That's k. Now, if I want to say k, like with an e, like that. If I want to say k with an u, it's like that. If I want to say k with a long a, it's like that. If I want to say k with a short a, it's just k because the vowel is just in there. I'm saying that now, it will make sense later. This is, I'm trying to, I try to show things in like a preview and then show you how we're getting to where we're going. All right, so we've got some more vowels to learn. There are in fact 16 of them, but you've learned the first six pretty well. So here we get to a point of urmi, which is a most the time when the power of kriya, the kriya shakti begins to happen. Kriya Shakti is the beginning of action. Kriya, from the Sanskrit root Kri, from which we get the Indo-European root, create. Okay, so now there are four letters that come out of Urmi. You will not see these very often, but you need to be aware of them. So the first one is Ri. So it's an R with a little dot. This is, if you've seen the word Rishi spelled out, that's Ri. So what I do is I go like that, then I draw the line, then I have a hook, and I put that on top. That's Ri, as in Rishi. The idea here is that there's a beginning of division of consciousness, but it hasn't fully moved out into the world. It's just still kind of doing its thing. It's still kind of mental. Uh, there's not a lot of good descriptions of this in the philosophy. Now, if we have re, what do you think the next one's going to be? Re. Oh, man, you guys are on today. Re, and this one, diacritical mark below, which makes it retroflex. We'll talk about that in a second. And then the, the mark there makes it a long re. This, once you've figured out the other re, is pretty easy. It's a little three, isn't it? Now I'm dyslexic, so sometimes I have to look back. So there, what I do is I go bam, 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 re. You will not see this very often, but it's theoretically a part of the language. Now, we Dr. also Lee. have this guy. Um, yes. So I know it's not, it's not going to be big, but our syllabary has it different. What is it? Which the, syllabary? It's the one that we print out. It's the one that I, I used last year with Dr. Williams. Um, but it's the one that we printed out. It's just slightly different. Which is different? I don't know if you can see it. It's uh, the same on the well, guy. Love it, a hook there. All right. Um, this is because I haven't looked at, at certain things. Often that little hook will be left. If it's this one, it will always have the double hook. So you're right. Yeah, that little tail. But again, you don't see these very often. And I know, yeah. especially in the manuscripts I read, they leave off that tail all the time. So excellent yeah. way to point that out. Thank you. All right. So now we're at a thing we pronounce Lri. So the nice thing here is that that is actually a letter L. We'll learn the letter L in a bit. So this is Lurie, which is you're basically writing an L and you're putting a little thing here. This is also a vowel, so it's attached to a consonant. So if I was attaching it to Cree, well, the Lurie is where you'll never see that, but like if this one here, if that's K, you take this little bit and you put it down there. If you want it to be a short, Re, like Cre, as in Kriya or Krikya, that's one like that. That little hook is like that little hook. See? So that's your Cree. 
and that's p. Well, three. Ah, I have I struggle going back and forth like that. Okay, Lurie, what do you think the next one's going to be? Kind of a long one. Doesn't yeah. it go to a? To a? We're not to a yet. We have to do long Lurie. I so don't see I, it on Guy Levitt's the long Lurie. The long Lurie? You don't see it? Yeah, on Guy Levitt's syllabary. Yeah, I, I'm just learning to use that one. Yeah, he doesn't include those on here. These are what are called liquids. You just you need to know these things, even if they're not on that syllabary. But if you look on um, have it in here. Well, you'll yeah. You can find all of these uh on this syllabary, the Sanskrit notes one. That's the one you're all looking at. You'll have Lari, Re, so E, Lari, Lari, and U, and then Re. I don't quite understand why it, that that's not a grammatical thing I work with. The important thing here, pattern recognition. If you see these kind of funky looking things, that means you need to like go back and figure out what they are. You will not see these a lot. They're more they're more theoretical than anything, which is why it's important to go over them. So when you start seeing them in reading, you'll be like, wait a minute, what the heck is that? And then you'll remember, oh, I remember Ulri was going on and on about these syllables I'd never see. And here I'm seeing one. It'll strike you. It definitely would mess with me when I would be reading it first. Uh, you see more of these, what we call retroflex vowels in early stuff and Vedic. Now, I haven't told you what the word retroflex means, but we'll come to that in a second. With retroflex, you put your tongue on the top of the roof of your mouth. And if you do this properly, you too can have a fine Indian accent. Let me see your tickets, please. The Indian accent often puts retroflexes onto words. So you are ending up saying, let me see your ticket, please. Ticket, ticket. ticket. You put your tongue at the top of your roof of your mouth. We'll work on this pronunciation a little bit more uh, as we move into the consonants. However, we are on to more letters. Now, we are at, I think, one of the most elegant of the letters. That's E. It's pronounced A or sometimes E, eh, often A. Eh. So with this, it's really, you swing it down like that, you swing it down like that, put the line on the top. It looks a lot like a triangle. That's a good way to think of it. Now, you have any guess as to what the next one is going to be? I. I, exactly. Uh, let me remind myself of something here. So I is just the same way, but you put a little hook on the top and write that clear. So I. So those are actually called diphthongs. I, the I, because it's two sil it's two vowels that come together. Theoretically in Sanskrit, and we'll learn about this when we come to Sunday. Uh plus E equals I equals I. And a great great way to remember this is Ma Heshwara. Is Maha meaning great and Ishwara uh, ish, ish what? Ishwara. So it's Maha, look at that. Ishwara. Sorry. Um, so Maha plus Ishwara creates Maheshwara. Mahesh is a name for God, a name for Shiva, Maha Isha. So A plus E equals A. That will be important later. But I'm just previewing. We're just previewing. Okay. So what we've had here is we have. A and I. A and here's I. All right. A and I. A or I has the flip. 
Uh, I always remember I as sounding like there's a there's a um, word for unto you is tasmai, tasmai. Or you can think of there's a religion called Jainism. So that's J-A-I-N, Jain. It's an I sound. I mm -hmm. Almost like you're saying with a wide mouth, you're saying, look me in the eye. Okay. From there, we have some other things. And all of these vowels are thought to be the progressive unfolding of the divine's plan to create the universe. So the next one we get is, I'm following this order here. This is O. Oh. So what does it look like? What other letter does this look like? Uh, uh, and ha. Uh. So there's a. Uh. Here is long a. Uh, and here is o. Oh. So it always helped me when I was learning this to kind of think of these together. A, uh, a, uh, o. Oh. Now, we have more developments. For we have down here, we have I. And what does I become? It becomes, just to make things harder. Ow. 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 So in many ways, the argument here is that I plus oo equals ow. Don't worry about that too hard. Um, the one way I remember this, I'm going to give you a Sunday rule that I just want you to put in your head and forget about, is the word lumbodara. Lumbodara means hanging belly, big belly. So udara, belly, starts with u, and then lumba means like hanging. Lumba plus udara. So you hear me say lumba udara. Okay, but lumbodara. Lumbodara sounds much nicer. So much of learning Sanskrit is learning the way sounds come together in a pleasant manner, at least according to Sanskrit theorists. We have two vowels left, and then you're going to have a break. Now, you're not going to think of these as vowels, but they are vowels. The last two are... Now, that's what? That's an uh, right? See that dot there? Everybody sees the dot? That's what's called anu, an, anu swara. The bindu, the bindi, the tiny little point, like the dot on somebody's head. So in this, all of creation, all of the musings, all the vowels, all of the unfolding of the world comes into a single point. It's as if Everything that's happened so far to begin manifesting the world shrinks back down to a tiny little. Okay, Alice, you had a question. I was just wondering um, about the AI um, sound. I've heard it said as like A before, like an A, just a longer A. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering um, if you have commentary on that. It's regional pronunciation for a lot, a lot of this. The, the thing is, like, I'll teach you my pronunciation. Ben will teach you yours. And they're, they're just as different people. Our different areas of India pronounce things differently. Like when you listen to a pundit from Nepal versus a pundit from Maharashtra, you're like, like, I remember I was in, I was in Pune one time. And people kept asking me what I studied. And I said Sanskrit. And they didn't understand that because in Maharashtra, the re sound in Sanskrit, Sanskrit, because that's how it's really spelled, Sanskrit, the, the re becomes ru. So they say Sanskrit. It's a regional difference. As long as you go, as long as you make that A not sound like E, it can be I, it can be A, like A-Y. I like to go A-I. So A or I. It, it kind of depends, but you have to get a, a, a sense that it's that eh, but expanded. Is, is it, which would be like more north and more south? Because I feel like it would probably be helpful to have an idea of like northern versus southern profiles. So you're not just like mixing up different dialects, uh, essentially. Don't worry about that now. Okay. Don't worry about that now. We'll get there. We'll get there. For now, 
get the sounds in your head, however you need them to be. And we'll, we'll do some chanting later. And that's where we'll work on pronunciation. I've consistently found that trying to teach people like the proper pronunciation and just the syllables doesn't work very well. It's only when we have full words that you can really, that students really pick up pronunciation. So important yeah. thing to remember, I, A, A, but it's not A and it's not E or it's not E or E. All right, so Great, thank you. everything has come down to this one single point, this bindu. So God has taken all of that business and drawn it together into one thing. What's that word? What's that letter? Uh. Uh. So that's uh. And this is what's called a visarga. See those two dots right there? So what we're really looking at is the dots. Like if I wanted to use one of these on ka, it would be like that. It's just two dots and then ka again with an anuswara, the bindu, kum. So what we're really looking at is these two dots in the end and the one dot above, all to the right. So the visarga, visarga literally means release. This is the last vowel. It all concentrates down to ma, to this mm. It's not even a ma, it's like mm. Like when I say traptakam, the mm at the end. Or ramo vannam, mm, the mm. Ramo vannam gachati. That's the little, uh, that's the mm. I'll get to ram, ramo vannam gachati in just a second. So what is the visarga then? So the visarga is the exploding fourth. So you go from, mm, you can have the contraction when you're, mm, and then the visarga is a ha breath, like mm -hmm. Om Namaha Shivaya. Oh, <laughs> Question? And then he's giving all these options. Sarah just told him, she's like, that's too many options, dude. Okay, please, please mute yourself if you're cross talking. Good morning, afternoon. Please, please I mute know. yourself if you're cross talking. Is there a day that works best for you? Okay, Tuesdays. Okay. okay. Air or Pam. Mute okay. yourself, please, Lindsay. And like, I talk like, you know? Lindsay. Look here. I am. Is that you? Very good. All right. Okay, so the last thing is, it's like the uh -huh, shiva ha, namaha, that external breath that are those two dots at the ends of a lot of mantras. And that's the breath shooting forth. This is the Lord finally moves and creates the universe. And out of that, uh huh, you get I'll get to all that. Uh, ben does it a lot better than I do. He gets a really beautiful staccato when he says the, the consonants. So we are done with the vowels. So I want a quick, this is a quick lightning round. Lightning round. What is this? Hi. Hi, very good. Hi. Re. Re, long re. Ow. That's no. O, and I suddenly realized we didn't do ow. So you have short O and long O. That's ow, like, like an A-U. Ow. Sorry, I missed that one. So you only have 15, now it's 16. So that's ow. So after your O, and that's O plus actually a U equals ow, A-U. My, like my initials. Okay, then uh, let's go to A, 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 E, 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 that one. E, 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 excellent. Now, what I want you to do, take five, do some yoga, hang around, whatever you need to do, we'll have five minutes, run to the bathroom, um, do as you wilt, and then when we come back, I'm going to do the consonants, but I'm going to move a lot faster because I want you to, the, the real lesson today is these vowels. These are the things I want you to have down cold. Now I'm going to introduce you to the consonants when we get back. We're not going to go into the philosophy of them all, 
But I just want you to get a good overview, and we're going to go into the consonants in detail next Tuesday. So, go on your little break. Recording. Uh, if you're just joining us now, I explained um a while. <laughs> okay. Up here at the top is a, we're going to do the consonants, and consonants are called vyanjana, whereas vowels are called swar. Up here at the top, and I'm not kidding you, this phrase, Ramo vanam gachati. That will be the phrase that will unlock all of Sanskrit to you. Has anyone ever heard this phrase, Ramo vanam gachati? It's Rama vanam to the forest gachati. Rama goes to the forest. All of the readings that we have in Goldman and most of the examples will be extracted from the Ramayana. The Ramayana is the second epic, great epic tale, I think Mahabharata is better, of uh, India. And the Ramayana is a story of God as Ram, or maybe God, I don't think he's a guy, it's, it's a whole other thing. And he goes into the forest because of some horrible things that happened that we're going to read about in all of our readings. And he goes to the forest and his wife and his brother come with him. They go to the forest. His wife gets kidnapped by a demon named Ravana and taken to Lanka. Rama finds a monkey army and he goes and tears crap up, kills Ravana, gets his wife Sita back, and all is good until he starts getting, Rama gets all upset, gets all upset. Maybe Sita said she was faithful to me, but maybe she was, and I don't know. How could I ever know? He has Sita a couple of times, and finally she says, look, douchebag, I'm going to pass through a fire, my Agni Pariksha, that will prove my purity. So she walks through the fire, she's unburnt, and Rama's like, oh, hooray, you're pure. And she's like, no, 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 no. You asked me three times, I did this thing. I'm going home to where I came from, to my mother and father in the earth. And she disappears to the ground. And Rama rules on until he dies. But luckily, he does end up having Sita leaves their two children behind. So that's the Ramayana. We're going to do a lot with the Ramayana. So repeat after me. Rama. Ramo. 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 Vanam. 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 Gachati. 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 Ramo vanam gachati. Ramo vanam vanam gachati. Ramo vanam gachati. Now, if you meet anyone who's learned Sanskrit using the Goldman system and textbook, if you just say Ramo vanam gachati, you'll both laugh and become best friends. <laughs> My friend Chloe says that this is the most beautiful phrase in the Sanskrit language. For this, we have a, a thing called a Mahavakya. Has anyone ever heard of a Mahavakya, especially in the context of Vedanta? It's like a grand statement. Yeah, a great saying, like, tat tvam asi, tat that, twam you, asi are, you are that. So this becomes a Mahavakya for you, studying Goldman, I promise. All right, now. Consonants. Where's my black mark? We're not going to go through these as complicated as I did with the other ones. But as I'm writing them, I want you to be writing them. So the first one we're going to start is, is a dead marker. Screw that marker. Let's go green. You're, yeah, that's nah, a little too light. Let's go blue. All right. Call. All right, so you see how I do that? I just kind of squiggle around like that, one line, and I put it over on the top. That's ka. After ka, we'll become ka. Wah. Let me get on this side here. Sorry, I'm a lefty. Ka. So ka and ka. Ka, it's aspirated. 
So ka, no breath comes out. Ka, a lot of breath comes out. So you'll see in a lot of these that we'll have an initial syllable and then we'll have it strengthened with an aspirate. So ka becomes ka. Next. This is ga. Now, ga, it's almost like you put a little, let me get the marker right. Put a little thing like that with like a little club nub that comes out there. It looks like a, it looks like a note in music notation. Then a long line and then over the top. That's ga. Anyone want to guess what the next one's going to be? Ga. Ga, yeah, exactly. Ga. So with this, it looks similar to another letter. The key aspect to remember is this line over the top. And I'm not going to tell you what the other one is right now, but you'll see it. So like that. So two little humps up to the top. Slap that bad boy over. Go. So this is a class of consonants. And the way we categorize consonants in Sanskrit is based on their position in your mouth. So we have ka, then we have cha, then we have pa, then we have pa, then we have ma. So follow after me, and I want you to find where that sound is in your mouth. Ka. 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 Cha. 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 Where's the sound? Chuck. Yeah, yeah. A little it's higher. Like back here. It's like cup is down here. Chuck. Chuck. So this is called palatal. It comes from your like your right at the back of your soft palate. Chuck. Then the next uh, one is ha. Remember, I was trying to get you to put your tongue on the front of your teeth. This is called the the, the dental class. Ha. Swag a tum. Swag a tum. The tuck. Dental in your tooth. Your tooth and your tongue. Ta, ta, ta. Then we get to the labials. So those are your lips. Your lips go pa. Pa, pa, pa. You feel how that's your lips? Pa. Pa. And then we're going to do ya, sha, and ha, but we'll do those when we get there. So this is the first class of now, or of consonants. Consonant, and the word is yangjana. So if you're writing long, your first is going to be ka. Then you go ka, aspirated. Then you go ga. Let me walk away from it. And then you go ga. And all of these classes that are gutturals, so ka, 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 ga, ga. And then finally you have na. I didn't write that. No. Does so, the na have um a uh on the syllabary here the na has a dot? Yes. See it right there, right there. Here I'll draw it again. Oh, I couldn't see it. Yeah. No. I need to have a different color there. But yeah, that that's really important. So here we have ka, ka, ga, ga, and then this na is written with a dot above it. There'll be a na with a dot below it too. So now I want you to repeat after me. Ka, ga, or ka, ka, ga, ga, na. One more time. Ka, ka, ga, 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 na. Find the spot in your throat where all those sounds are coming. Open your throat up, open your mouth up, and really like, like breathe into it. Ka, 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 ga, na. When the pundits do this, they do it really no. fast. They go, ka, 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 na. and that's a good way to practice. But you go, ka, 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 na. and if you say it, try saying it really fast. Upset people. Notice when you say that really fast, ka, 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 na, ka, 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 na, ka, 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 na, you know the exact spot in your throat where this sound is supposed to come from. Unlike English, the Sanskrit alphabet is directed according to sound. And part of that sound 
is the place in your mouth. Now, I'm going to teach you the next class, which is going to come from palatal. Chuck. Say chuck with me. Chuck. 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 And then we're going to go chuck, 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 da. But we're not there yet. Before we do that, I want to make a short little statement about this. What does that mean? Oh. Um. All right, let me hear an ohm from a couple of you. Let me come bring it out. Oh. Um. Um. Yeah, everybody ohm um for a second. Ohm. Um. 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 Um is known as the pranava. Pranava means the primordial syllable, as if it's what all things come from. And there's an argument that within the Om, there are all the sounds of the language of Sanskrit. So get ripe with it. Listen, listen to me do an Om, and then I want you to do one. But get ripe with it. Start to get right back here, right back here to the gutter. Um. One more time. Uh. It does travel. See? All the way there. And you get all the way forward to the ma. And these ma are the labial, the lips. So in there, you get all of the positions of the Sanskrit language are found in the own. So, ka 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 na, ah, ka 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 na, ah. Yeah, this, I'm, I'm really good at teaching this. It's great. Okay, so our next one is cha. And remember I call these guttural? They're also just get called by this first one. So it's there's a word called varga, which means like a quality or a class. So when you're talking about these uh, consonants, they'll be called the ka class. Ka, guttural, ka. So I don't know if it, it's, if this helps you by thinking about the spot in your mouth when you're pronouncing these, that's great. If it doesn't, that's okay too. These are linguistic terms, but... Pundits would just call these a uh, syllables of the ka class. Ka varga vyanja. Someone have something to say? All right. So we're at cha. Anybody want to venture to guess what the next one's going to be? Without looking at your syllabary? The, the difference between cha and cha is the aspiration. Yes. So we get to cha, which is one of my favorite ones to write, and that's cha. Now, Here's where it's confusing. Sanskrit always says cha. They don't have our like, if it's gonna be a ka, like in can, they'll use a k. So the Hello? C sound, what we think of as a C sound, oh, is always nine. cha. And the distinction here is cha and cha. It helps to breathe out. You're aspirating, spirate from spirit. The spirit is the breath of life. Cha, cha, cha. Cha, cha, cha. Now you're noticing where that is in your head. Cha, 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 cha. You can cha, 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 cha. You got that. It's right like the back of your tongue is hitting your soft palate. Cha, cha, cha. And then we're going to get. You never thought of these sounds going together, but once you understand the Sanskrit alphabet, they really do kind of intuitively make sense. Ja. Let me hear you. Ja. 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 This is like I'm going to a job. Ja. 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 Anybody want to guess the last, the, nether, the next one? Ja. ja. There you go. Ja. This one screws with me every time. I've always struggled with it because it looks so much like the eye. And I just have, like, my dyslexia does not work with me on this one. I know it when I see it, but it's always hard for me to write. So it's really something like, um, let me try to do it, like, a proper way. It's like this. Yeah, I just can't do it. That's how I write ja. You'll know it when you see it. So I like to think of it as just like an, it looks like an E, but it has a, its own line because E would be independent. It wouldn't have that line there. So this is ja. So cha 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 I need a na. What's my na? There's got to be a na. Always a na at the end. This is a na, and you see the little uh, sort of tilde above it? 
it's like the Spanish ña or like conejo. Um, what I like to remember this one is it's the na and ñana. So if you say ñana, your tongue gets there. Nana. Like no, Nana. like gnosis. Ñana. 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 And now, here's where it makes sense. Cha cha ja ja na. 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 Find the spot. All right, let me hear some cha 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 nas. Saying it fast will get you there. Now we review. I want you scaring children. Trust me, you are going to be able to do that in your sleep and terrify everyone around you. And we watch the video in the way that Ben says them even faster than I do. Okay, so this is the class that is called the palate. Sometimes when you're lost on pronunciation, you just remember the sequence. So if I'm like, if I'm doing a ja, and I remember, oh wait, ja sounds like cha. So ja, cha, okay, I got it. So the very alphabet tells you how to pronounce it. All right, we're moving right along. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Love my whiteboard. Hey, y'all like my kitchen? We just got new appliances a little while back. Someone in the family makes money. That would not be me. All right. We are moving to something new and exciting. These are the retroflexes. I would argue that the retroflexes are some of the hardest to do. I'm recording, right? Yes. Okay. That my, my thing got me. I, I get concerned. Okay. Retroflex. These are called cerebral. And this is the p class. So we had the k, we had the ch, and now we have the p. Remember, huh. I told you about the Indian accent? Let me see your ticket, please. Huh. Let me see your ticket, please. Ticket, 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 ticket. The huh. retroflex. That's where you get there. And you can be sure we're going to have fun with this one. These are some of the hardest for me to pronounce, and they're very characteristic of India. Um, different languages have more retroflexes than others. Telugu has tons of them, in fact. And you can also, theoretically, there was an argument that Sanskrit, before it came to India, when it was old into Iranian, had no retroflexes. And the Indians, when they encountered this language, they put all these retroflex sound in there because that's more sonorous to the Indian ear. I think they're kind of hard to pronounce, but once you see them in the context of a word, because of the way words come together, you get, you'll get a feel for it. Okay, so the first one is pa, 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 pa. Did you get your tongue over the top of the pa, pa, pa. Let your tongue, your tongue knows how to do this. Because this is the language of the universe and everything comes from this, you already know how to do this. You're, let your tongue do the work. Ta. 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 What do you think the next one's going to be? Ta. Ah, there you Ta. go. Now, in diacritics, we put this little dot below the T. So, ta. Here, this will take you a while to hear the difference, but ta and ta. 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 Got it? Ta. All right. Ta. The next one. It's gonna be duh. What does that look like? I e. Uh, this is the this is the ta class, the ta varga, and they're called cerebrals. So cerebral, like cerebral being mental. Just think of how your tongue comes up, it's like your tongue touches your brain and then flaps on down. So, ta, you have ta, ta, and then this is da. Same thing with your tongue, where it's a ta, 
your your T starts high in your mouth, huh? The D starts like right at the middle of your palate. Da. 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 What do we think the next one's gonna be? Da. Da. Yeah. Wait a minute. Am I doing that wrong? I have to a weird thing. See, this still very confusing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's the thing. That's what I forgot. This is because I don't write as much as I used to. I don't want to lead you astray. It doesn't have a little tail. You'll see that there's another consonant that has a little tail. So with this, and one of the ways I always remember these yes. is other than this one, they have a lot of little, they have a lot of circles. And then finally, we have our nasal, and this is like my favorite of all times. Not. Not. Yeah. A good way to remember this is to go or not. Like a or not. Or not. Or not. Or not. 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 And often when people are spelling yeah. out, they'll they'll they won't say not. They'll say or not. Or not. They throw a little re on there, like the retroflex re. So they're not. So no, uh, 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 no. Nah. Nah. Not a pay attention. <laughs> so repeat after me each after each one. So one at a time. Ha. Huh. Ha. 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 Good. Da. 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 Yeah, put a little aspiration there. And finally, Rana. 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 I mean, if you can just go na and get it, but I, I, putting that little re on there helps me. Rana. 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 Get your tongue there. Na. So now, ha, ka, 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 na. Get your tongue in the right place for each one of them. Why do I keep going so fast like that? Because your the syllables will shape the way your tongue does the thing. It will do the thing. Your tongue already knows. I want you to be upsetting everyone around. Can you do it the other way around? <laughs> All right. We are getting there like swimwear. We are going to the next class. We only have two more to go. This is the dental class. Um, somebody's making a fair amount of noise. Uh, if you have a lot of background noise going on, please mute yourself. So the dental class, in the dental class, like I kept saying, in swagatum, you get the T, that the first one is, yeah, first one is ta, but it's not ta, like we say. We usually say, when I'm when I use the word ta in English, I'd say hit ting, hit ting. In, in Sanskrit, it would be hit ting, hit ting. You need to get the, your tongue to really touch your tooth. So they're dental. They're called the T class or the T varga. What do we think the next one's going to be after T? Huh. Huh. Yeah. What am I doing? That one you This one like always looks like the Y. Yeah, it does. And I'll talk to you about that. It does look like the Y. The thing you want to look for really to note is this guy. So here's a Y. That's what Y looks like, which looks like a Y in English. And here's what a T looks like. And in a minute, we're going to get duh. And we already had, what was this one? Line across the top and the tootle humps. Duh. Duh, yeah, aspirated guh. So those look really similar. Uh, and uh, they won't always look similar. <laughs> but really pay attention here to that little loop. The little loop here is the key. That's, sometimes it helps to see it in color. That's what makes it tuh and nothing else. 
All right. And it's never, it's not ever attached to the line above? Oh, no, you'll see it attached to the line above in some printing, like that. It isn't always, though. In a lot of manuscripts, it'll be like that with a little bit of space. But it's just the presence of that little circle there that makes it. But yeah, and a lot of like the formal printed ones, they do touch, kind of like that. But the key is this needs, this is tiny. So it's little circle, big thing, tuh. Okay, so we got to tuh. Our next one, uh, this is the easiest class for us, is duh. So duh, but again, get your tongue to the front of your mouth. Duh. 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 And then we're going to have, what do you think this one is? Duh. Yeah. Duh. 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 And finally, what do you think this one's going to be? No. No. Nah. And this is the no nah that you see all the time. This is the most common no. Nah. No. Nah. And again, get your hey, tongue. Hey, you're writing. I mean, I can't see, but you're writing a little bit beneath where I can see. Let me, let me get some more space. Oh, let's see this. So this one is no. I like to make like a little like a little line like that, like a little nubbin, and then I go over and then to the top. No. And again, you want that right in the front of your mouth. No. Ta da da na na ta ta da. Ha, ha, na. Ha, ha, na. Hey, Atlas, you have a question. Um, I'm confused in that I have from following along that the uh, symbol for the is the same as the symbol for the like the from the cerebral class, and that the dental, like the ha, um, is the same as. From guttural class. Okay, let's um let me get through this one and then I'll show you how they all how they're all different. I'll get to there. Trust me, there, there's a few more steps and then it'll be clearer. All right, so we've done not. So these are all dental. So this is where you repeat after me. Ta ta da da na. Ta ta da da na. Ta ta da da na. So much of Sanskrit is muscle memory. It's a language that you don't read with your eyes. You read with your mouth. You got to say it out loud. And now we get to our last sort of big class. These are called the labials. With your lips. Los labios. So here we get some of the most righteous sounds in the world, like puh, 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 puh. Get ripe with it. Get your lips in there. Puh, 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 puh. And then this is like one of my favorite letters of all time because it's fun to write. Puh, 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 puh. Then we're gonna go puh. This looks like another letter. The key thing to see here in this particular letter is that. And that is ba. Pa, pa, ba. And then finally, pa, pa, ba, ba. Pa, pa, ba, ba. And so that's B-H-A. And over here is the final one. Ma. Now, when you when you look at like sort of the charts, you'll notice that ba and ma go together. What do you need to always remember here? Labial. If you remember labial, but it's a ba if it's not crossed. If there's a line over the top, it's a ma. Okay, so we're gonna do pa pa ba ba ma. 
And then I'm going to explain these nasals uh, for Atlas. I appreciate uh, you saying so because you will help all of us else by asking such a question. Pa, pa, ba, ba, hold on. Pa, pa, ba, pa, ma. Pa, pa, ba, ba, ma. Pa, pa, ba, ba, ma. Right in the lips. Pa, pa, ba, ba, ma. Pa, pa, ba, ba, Get ready to scare children. All right. So quickly, before I do the last couple of letters, I want you to do something for me. Get your, um, get out. Does everybody have this guy printed? list of letters, or if you have Goldman in front of you, it's on page 13. It's just a Sanskrit alphabet. Syllabary. Uh, hmm? Syllabary. Syllabary. I'm trying to learn to use these terms. All right, so that's the syllabary. If you look all the way to the right, you will see that all of the nas, so you see kaka, gaga, na, and then you have a na, and a na, and a na, and a na, and a ma. So it's na. Na. Na, yep, you got that's a nya. And then I know these like in my bones, but it's like I have to look or I get us all confused in my head. Pa 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 na 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 na. 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 And ma. Mm -hmm. All right. So. If we start with what we what we are calling the guttural class, so that's the ka class. Ka ka ga ga na, ka ka ga ga na. Then we have the cha class. What was that cha class called? They were called palatal. Cha cha na na na, cha cha ja ja na. See how that's that na is right there. Then if you go to the cerebral, those are the retroflex ones. Where is your tongue on that last na? Oh, uh, cha-cha-ja-ja, cha-cha-ja-ja-na. Ja, ja, so like kind of a little bit forward on the palate. Cha-cha-ja-ja-na, cha-cha-ja-ja-na. Mm -hmm. I actually touch my tongue to just the very back of my front of my hard palate. Cha-cha-ja-ja-na, cha-cha-ja-ja-na. Mm -hmm. Then we get down to the retroflex class, the ta class, the cerebral class. Ta ta da da na, ta ta da da na, and that or na is hard to say. But if you go ta ta da da, na, you can get there. Let your tongue do the work. So then we go to the dental class, which is the ta class. Ta ta, see even I screwed up. Ta ta da da na, ta ta da da na. So the na sound is right there, na. And then finally we have the pa class which is the lobules, pa, 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 ma. Now, why did I want to do this? Because I wanted you to see all these, this erna looks like that uh, retroflex da, but without the dot. This is the nya. So we have these different na sounds. So we have effectively three na sounds and one ma sound. All of them should be considered to be connected in the sense that they're similar sound, but each one has a particular way of pronunciation depending on where it is in your mouth. Now, I defy you to say na without using your lips. Give yourself a try. No. no. Or with using your lips. No. It has to be ma because you can't make a na sound with your lips. You can make a na sound. You can go na, na, na. I, I can't even find a way for my mouth to make a na sound with my lips. So again, the way that this alphabet and syllabary are organized dictate the way that you will use them. Also, unfortunately to say, you know, what is A, B, C, D, E, F, G? It's an alphabet. Well, it's different okay. because that's an alphabet. Yeah, well, there is a little bit of an alphabet to Sanskrit. When you open up a Sanskrit dictionary, it will start with short a, uh, then long a, uh, and then like an uh, oo in the a, and then you go ka, ka, ga, ga, na, 
those are the headings for each word class. When you look something up in Sanskrit, and the reason why I'm teaching you all of this in this order is because this is the same order that Sanskrit dictionaries will use to organize their uh, words. And when you come to, I can't remember how it does it here, I'm looking in Goldman. Goldman, your book that you'll be reading. Hey, hey, ba, 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 ra, 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 so when you're looking up stuff in this glossary, in the glossary of our textbook, it will be in the same order that we are going over these letters here. Now, we have two, sort of three, last little classes. The first, and these are called, these are called semi-vowels because they use kind of the part of your mouth that you would make vowels with, but they're also very consonantal. So the first one is the easiest one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just that, that should be an easy one for you because it looks like you, it looks like yeah in English, yeah. Yeah. And now you get, then you get ra. So when I do ra, one line, two line, top line. And for me, this is ra. I've always looked at this and seen an R. I just, I see an R in it. I don't, I don't know if you do, but this, it's not hard to see that as ra. So ya, ra. And here we go to another one. This is la. What does that look like? It looks like ohm put on up on the bottom. Yeah, but it also looks like re and re. So that's the same. That's a la sound. So ya, ra, la. And finally, and I always thought that this one just kind of makes sense intuitively as well. That's va. But what does it look like? It looks like ba. So a ba is like a va with a line through it. Now, let me write them right in a line. Oh, 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 oh. We're getting close to being done, y'all. We're getting close. All right. Ya, ra, la, va. So you've gone ka 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 na, cha 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 da, ta 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 na, ta 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 na, pa 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 ma, ya ra la va. And that's how they just, they slam them right through. After you hit that ma, you go, yara lava. Now notice, yara lava. When you say that out loud, where is it in your mouth? Say it with me. Yara lava. Yara lava. Yara lava. Yara lava. It's kind of like right in the middle there. And it's not quite like the staccato of a consonant. So that's why we call them semi-vowels. And these very often are attached to other words. It's sort of like palatal and... Retroflexal, it's sort of yeah, yeah. Um, can't remember the exact linguistics of it. Yeah, they're a little like a palatal on the retroflex. I like that way of putting it. Uh, all right, so finally, we're going to get to these classes called sibilants. The important thing to remember here is these are S sounds. So, this is the first one, and that is. And a retroflex or in, a, in diacriticals like that. This may be familiar to you if you've ever seen this word. Anybody take a guess what that is? Shiva. Yeah. So there's a sh, and then we haven't learned this vowel thing yet. I'll teach that to you next time. So that's Shiva. This is how you write an I vowel when it's not standing on its own, when it's connected to another consonant. We'll get to that. Don't worry about it. All right. Then we have this one, which is sha. Now, shiva purusha. There's a slight difference. I defy you to be able to hear the difference between these until you've been doing Sanskrit a while and heard a lot of recitation. So don't worry about it too hard. Students always get stuck on this. Like, I want to say the sha and the sha just right. And I'm like, you it comes with practice and more exposure because it's a distinction we don't easily make in English. So this is sh. Both of these you will pronounce sh and sh. Huh. So I think shiva and I think, what, that's, that's trying to write in English letters. 
Purusha. Does anybody know what the word Purusha means? It's like soul. Soul, or I like to think person. Purusha. So that sha there is this sha. Purusha. And finally, this sa. And that is sa without any inflection at all. It's just sa. It's just sa, like our sa, like sight, like um, Santa Claus. So for these, you have, we had yara lava. And then after that, they just roll deep and go, sha, sha, sa. So you've gone, yara lava, yeah. then you go, sha, 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 or sha, sha, sa, sha, sha, sa. sha, sha. So say, sha, sha, sa, sha, sha, sa, sha, sha, sa. The only thing you really have to remember is these are SHs and this is an S. So just if you, that's the only thing to remember right now. That's it. So just remember those sha sounds. Now, finally, and theoretically, we have three more vowels or three more words. Uh, the first one is really important. Or that is huh. So huh kind of looks a little bit like a five. I always like to imagine it like a kind of like I'm drawing a five and then I get lost. So I always do this. And then a kind of like sweeping, like a uh, quotation mark, kind of. So that's huh. And then I'm just going to show you this one. We don't need it. But the cool thing is the huh comes at the end of all emanation. Um, when you'll hear that in just a second. So there's another one that you just need to be aware of. That I really suck at drawing and always have. And that is, God, come on. From the get-go, this one has always been hard for me. There it is. And this is a ksha. So it's a ka and sha. So it's the first word in kshatriya, kshatriya, the second of the classes. All right. So now, uh, take out whatever uh, sil syllabary you have that has all of the letters on it. Is there a third one? You said there were three more. Yeah, but I just don't know if it's worth teaching. It's okay. It's kind of, it's like, it's, yeah. In the Guru Gita, the Ksha is used quite a bit. Yeah, there is. Um, and you'll see Ksha is a common one, but it's really kind of a conjunct. So it's Ka. So Ka. Uh, uh, there's a Ka. And here's the Sha becomes, boy, my handwriting is terrible. We'll get there. You'll recognize the shot really fast. Okay, so now we have gone. Uh, uh, e, e, u, u, ro, ro, lir, lir, a, o, i, ow. Those are the vowels. Once you get done with the vowels, then the universe is about to emanate. There's a school of philosophy called Sankhya, the enumeration school, and they will explain how all the different elements of the individual and the world move forth and emanate in the world. And all of these are correlated to letters. So when we do this, when we say the vowels, if we remember those, that's God getting ready. What happens when God makes it happen? So what I want you to do is I want you, oh, it's Sankhya, Sankhya, which means the uh, Kya is a root, it means to speak, and Sun means well or good, like Sanskrit, well put together. Sankhya means something like almost uh, the perfectly enumerated. So what I want you to do is see that this gr grammar that we're doing here has these philosophical components to it that help you get your head around it. But at this point, it's pattern recognition. You need to be able to recognize them and recognize the sounds. So <laughs> your homework is going to be uh, these worksheets. And there's some great asynchronous uh, supports for this. So on one of these, you're just going to write out all the vowels. Write on, uh, yes, this first one. 
And I want you to one, two, three, four, five, short up. Then one, two, three, four, five, short up. Just gonna practice those all the way down. So those are the vowels. And then I also want you to try your hand at filling out the second one. I want you to fill out all of them. And here you'll go ka, and you'll write ka, 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 ga, 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 no. And what you're gonna do for your assignment is you're gonna fill this out, fill it out, and then you're gonna take a picture and you're gonna upload it to Canvas as an image. And from there, so we're working, so you're gonna work tactily to practice. So you can either, I mean, there's a couple of ways that I, I think are really effective. One way is to just look at, you know, your syllabary or look at the page in Goldman and just, you know, like, okay, huh. And then write 15 cuz and then write go and then just write 15 guys. Do that to get your hands used to it and your mind into it. And then go back and fill out the syllabary. I think that's really helpful. And I'm going to leave it up to you. This is another one of those that the more you put the time in, the faster it's going to come. And I don't know how far we're going to get before the retreat, but I want us to get to the point where we're reading enough Devanagari that I'm going to send you off for two weeks. And your practice is going to be practicing transliterating Sanskrit and writing in Sanskrit. And I have a couple of ideas how to do that. So that was why I told you in the first day, I want you all to start thinking of a good text or a text that you really like. We can all do the same text. You can do different texts. It's not that hard. I just have to be able to see the original and compare it to your transliteration. Guru Gita would be a good one. And there's lots of great resources out there. Hanuman Chalisa would be a good one. All sorts of things. Okay. We are kind of at the end of class. Um, this went longer than I thought, but it went well. Do we have any questions? I I loved the practice today. Um, yeah, wording things. I guess, is there any chance? Um, I think for me, doing things on the weekends, the videos, I don't know when you're going to be uploading videos, like from Ben, um, or is it possible for us to view those on the weekends? Uh, yeah, I had the asynchronous one up before, but well, we just started. Yeah. yeah. So what I'll do probably is have the asynchronous materials up. I'll get them up on Friday, if not earlier. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. That'd be, yeah. That'd and be then really... today, uh, I actually I have to drive my partner to a fish concert immediately after this. But uh, so I won't have a chance to convert and get this file up. But you will have every class file right after class. I'll do this whole thing. Like you, this thing that you've got here, you'll have the video of. I'll usually put it up within a couple hours of class being over. It'll probably be tomorrow though on this one. But yeah, so you can review what I did. You can go over what uh, Dr. Williams does. And every time I write that asynchronous thing, when I say asynchronous materials, I want you to go through those either before or after the class, watch them, see what's useful, see what's not. The one thing I haven't been doing is there is an invocation to Saraswati that Dr. Williams uses uh, with the other courses and I just haven't gotten my legs around it enough to really teach it to you. Once I once I do, we will. But right now, it's just learn the patterns, get the sounds in your mouth. You should be running around. You should just be annoying everyone with that. Get it in your head. Scream it at children. Terrify geese in the lawn. Magic. It's the very body of God. This is the very transformation of the universe from pure potential into something. Was God going from A to H? So it's kind of a big deal. But also, the more you say it and the more you get your tongue around it, that your tongue will teach you. Keep practicing. You'll be back. Your assignments are up. Fill out that syllabary. We're going to go over the consonants more next semester or next week. And we'll also start with how to write the vowels with consonants and a thing that will initially trouble you, which is conjunct consonants. And a conjunct consonant, when two letters come together like ta and say ra, Ta plus ra equals tra, as in man 
mantra. <laughs> and mantra, there's the ma, that's part of an N, that's a T, an R, and an A, mantra. This will freak you out. We've got good resources for it. It's just familiarity. And soon you'll just look at that and you'll naturally see it because you can see the ta in there and you can see the ra in there. But yeah, we'll get to conjunct consonants next. Any questions? Good class. I know you guys got to go do your do your business. <laughs> Speak now or forever hold your peace. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You are most welcome. This has been a blast for me. So I will end the class as I think all things should be ended with the sacred mantra as you offer something into the fire. Swaha. See you next time. Swaha. Swaha. Swaha.